I just want to start this video off by asking a question. Were you slightly confused while watching The Father? Which man was Paul? Who was Lucy? Was the house changing in each scene? Why did Anthony always need his watch? Does the flat belong to Anthony? Why did Anne suffocate her dad with a pillow? Why was the man slapping Anthony? What's the meaning of the leaves and the trees at the end? What's this movie trying to say? Well, I'm here to help you out. I just have to quickly say I love this movie so much. Like one of the most touching, heartbreaking movies I've ever seen. It was incredible. I've seen this movie twice. The first time I soaked it in, the second time I took notes, and now I want to break down all the symbols and themes. So to break it down, we're going to use three themes. One, perception of time, where we're going to discuss Anthony's dementia, the subjective point of view, the objective point of view, the scenery changing, Anthony's watch, and Anthony's skipping CD player. Two, parental approval, where we'll discuss adult child psychology, Anthony's comments about Anne, and the pillow strangling scene. And three, resilience of love, where we'll discuss loss of opportunity, the diamond scene, the slapping scene, the fear of loss, the film's title, and the leaves and the trees at the end of the film, and much more. And if you liked the video, please leave a thumbs up and a comment, it helps so much. And if you want to see more of these, please make sure to subscribe as well. Let's get started. Theme number one perception of time. In this film, our main character, Anthony, is an 80-year-old man suffering from dementia. Dementia is a general term describing a decline in certain mental abilities, which often includes symptoms of confusion, disorientation, anxiety, paranoia, mood swings, and most notably, memory loss. All symptoms in this film that our main character, Anthony, suffers from. But most interestingly, for us as the viewers, the vast majority of this film is told through Anthony's fractured and disoriented state of mind. As the viewers, we also have dementia. Any scenes with Anthony present are unreliable. Time shifts backwards and forwards, making the story non-chronological. Scenes repeat themselves as we see and hear conversations we have already experienced, with slight verbal alterations and visual differences. Characters are changing names and switching personalities. The colors, images, and objects in the room are always changing so subtly from scene to scene. The film is crafted this way to make the viewer understand Anthony's recollection of his life in the past several years. And most importantly, the film is crafted this way for us to understand Anthony's point of view, his confusion, and his frustration with himself and his family and friends. But these are only the subjective scenes. We also get the objective scenes. Any scenes without Anthony in them are much more honest, straightforward, and easier to comprehend. And these objective scenes are very few and far between, like short glimpses into the reality of Anthony's life and family. From these scenes, we learn that Olivia Coleman is the real Anne, and Rufus Sewell is the real Paul. Anthony has had several carers before Laura, and the flat he lives in and thinks is his is not his. It belongs to Anne, who is only away when she is working. One very important item that Anthony can't seem to live without is his watch. He either has it on, or is trying to find it, or is accusing someone of taking it. The watch symbolizes how Anthony is desperately trying to hold on to a clear perception of time. In reality, Anthony's perception of time is escaping him. He's recovering it, he's losing it once again, and accusing others of messing with it, just like he does with his watch. Another fantastically symbolic scene that occurs much more briefly is the moment with Anthony's CD player. Anthony is peacefully enjoying his classical music when suddenly his player begins to skip. This scene symbolizes Anthony's sudden loss of comfortable pattern and rhythm to the lifestyle that he has always known. Now the events in his life repeat and skip in a way that isn't pleasant for anyone. Theme number two parental approval. While watching this movie, I kept thinking about the idea of why we care so much about what our parents think of us, even when we become adults. It's so odd. So of course, I looked into it, and in an interesting article by psychotherapist Sarah Shapiro Halberstam, we get the psychology of it nicely broken down. And I feel like this excerpt really sums it up. As young adults, we make our own decisions, yet we wait with bated breath for our parents' approval. Why? Because approval means having our needs met, and having our needs met means survival. Though we are adults and are able to get what we desire on our own, our primal brain never grows up. This explains so much about us as adults, including Anne in this film. Anne cares deeply about what her dad says about her. When he says she looks good, she's very proud. And when he stops Anne to say Anne, thank you for everything, she feels a tidal wave of emotions. The really unfortunate thing is, Anthony also has a lot of hurtful things to say about his daughter Anne. He's most often hostile towards Anne, who he claims reminds him of her mother, who he is certainly not fond of. He thinks Anne is trying to steal a flat, which is hers, but he's convinced it's his. He even believes Anne is conspiring to take even more from him. He gossips about how she is foolish, unintelligent, forgetful, conniving, and most importantly, less of a daughter than her sister, Lucy. 
Lucy has sadly passed away in a tragic accident, but Anthony believes she is still alive and she just simply can't make it out to see him. Anne sees him every single day and he still tells her that Lucy is his favorite. This brings us to the most shocking scene in the film, the suffocation scene. I feel like this scene could symbolize one of two things, or even two things at the same time. In one way, this scene could be a nightmare of Anthony's, considering his uncontrollable paranoia, believing his daughter is trying to take everything away from him in his final moments of life. But in another way, this could be the most dark and tragic thought that flies through Anne's head. A brief, twisted thought of ending her father's suffering of irreversible mental illness and ending her own suffering of exhaustion and disapproval. I feel like it's the second one, but let me know in the comments what you think about that part. I thought it was really interesting and complex. But overall, Anthony could simply be misdirecting ill feelings towards Anne that he actually has for other people in his life. However, Anne is worried that Anthony, in this state of mind, could be revealing his most honest feelings that he has always felt all his life, and Anne continuously rushes frantically to aid her father, not only to care for a dying loved one, but also as a desperate final attempt to earn his approval. Theme number three, resilience of love. In this film, Anne and Anthony are both experiencing a world of hardship. However, they are both experiencing hardship in a slightly different way. Anne and Anthony are still willing to push through their individual obstacles to express their unconditional love for one another. Anne's major obstacle is loss of opportunity. After work, instead of enjoying her afternoon, Anne constantly rushes to check on Anthony. Instead of taking trips with Paul, Anne stays home to take care of Anthony. And instead of enjoying this peaceful, mature stage in her life, life and worries about Anthony. She looks hopelessly out the window at a couple who seem to be enjoying the life that Anne should currently be enjoying, where they are in no way dealing with a psychological weight as heavy as the one Anne has to bear. But Anne holds on tightly to the company of what's left of her father. She feels Anthony's ties that likely remind her of a time when he was the man that she always knew him as. She's also reluctant to let the doctor know about Anthony's declining mental health, as she suddenly leaves Dr. Sarai hanging on the phone when she was about to call her. Anne here is resisting the reality that Anthony may need to live in a nursing home, which Anthony clearly wants less than anything. Symbolically, in this same scene, we see Anne here holding a large diamond, traditionally a symbol of unbreakable love and eternal commitment. Anthony's obstacle, more obviously, is his deteriorating mind. Even without Lucy present, Anthony has dreams about her last moments with him and actually enjoys Laura's company who reminds him so much of Lucy. Anthony begs his daughter Anne to stay with him at multiple moments in the film, and as mentioned before, stops his daughter to thank her for everything she has done. Anthony sometimes villainizes Anne's romantic partner, Paul, because he subconsciously feels like Paul is slowly stealing her away from him. Anthony also feels like he's being punished for his incompetence, which is portrayed in such a heartbreaking way in this scene. But realistically, Paul has the best intentions for Anne, and believes this is a pivotal point in her life where she needs to move on. And symbolized by this shot, Anne must make her final departure from a man who she loves, whose mind is falling apart. Which brings me to the title of this film. The father is expected to provide, expected to support, and expected to secure us when we feel our most vulnerable. Sadly, Anthony can't provide, support, or secure Anne through all of the vulnerable feelings she feels because of him. When Anthony wipes Anne's tears, it's his last definitive action as a father. And it's in this final scene that Anthony also learns that he has to let go. And this is where the symbol of the leaves come in. The leaves in this film symbolize the cycle of life and the inevitability of loss, the heartbreaking fact that everything we love in life won't last forever. This is why, in the end of the film, in Anthony's most broken state of mind where he even forgets who he is, he says, I feel as if I'm losing all my leaves. Loss has always been Anthony's greatest fear in this film, signified earlier by one of the most important lines in the film. I'm losing all my things, everyone's just helping themselves, and if this goes on much longer, I'll be stark naked. I won't be able to tell what time it is. And it's Catherine's final lines that capture the underlying message of the film. It's sunny outside. We have to go while it's sunny. We have to take that chance because it never lasts long when the weather's that good, does it? To fully appreciate the short moments we have is something we all can learn from at any stage in life, whether we're Laura, Catherine, Anne, Paul, and even Anthony. All right, that's my analysis. Please let me know your theories, themes, messages, and interpretations of this beautiful film. I hope you subscribe so I can see you again. And thank you so much for watching. See you later.